usually it takes about 10 seconds to actually show up um, on the page, but I'll just make sure that it's working. Dun, dun, dun. Hello, LinkedIn. Good evening. If you can see us, come and say hello in the comments. Tell us where you are. Is this the awkward bit where we all like look to see if we're live? <laughs> this is the weird bit that live. we don't know if we're 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 live. I think we pretty much. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure we are. I'm just oh, refreshing yeah. on LinkedIn to see if it pops up. Because <laughs> everybody's got to. Let's just check. There we go. Why is it so nerve wracking? I don't know. <laughs> like, we should be used to this. Why, why am I so nervous about potentially only talking to myself? <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, hey, everyone, if you're just if you're joining us, if you come and say hello down below in the comments, let us know where you're coming from. Tell us who you are. Give us a wee wave. We'll just give it a few minutes to let everyone come in. I'm not seeing it coming up yet on LinkedIn. Oh, there we go. Hey, John. Aha, uh -huh. we have humans. Yeah, we're there. Look, proof. Hey, John. <laughs> hey, John. Welcome. Hey. Hello, John. <laughs> Yeah, we're live. There we go. Excellent. We'll just let a few minutes, just let everyone come in. That's Welcome honest. if you're just joining us just now. Rachel, are you in an art gallery this evening? I am in my office in the beautiful Barras, and I do have some beautiful artwork here. And Hey, Katie, yeah. thanks for letting us know. It's not popping up on my LinkedIn, but yeah, I, I trust you. I trust you. We're live. I'm only just getting us live. It's weird, isn't it? Sometimes it shows it's not on my phone. No, it's coming up. Yeah. Hey, Caroline. Hey, Anita. Welcome. How are we all? You all surviving? Hey, Doing all nice right? to see you all. Rainy Aberdeen. Nice to see you, Katie. And Kay is there. Hi, Kay. Is it raining where everyone else is? It's very wet where I am. Yeah, rainy. Rainy Glasgow. Well, just wait a wee minute. Just everyone comes in. If you just joined us, come say hello down below in the comments. Hello, Sophie. I've not seen you today. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sophie works in my team. <laughs> I've not seen you. <laughs> Hello, person above me. <laughs> There's Lucy joining us with Keenan. Hey, Just wait a wee minute, guys, till we get started. Somehow. Hi, I'm Lucy. How are work. you? Oh, there she goes. <laughs> She's off. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. What ifs, Dad? What ifs? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Rach, I think. Oh, we've lost Mel, have we? Mel, Mel has taken our dog upstairs because he was whining for his dinner. So. Ah. <laughs> oh boy. That's perfectly acceptable. To be honest, give Andrew 10 minutes and he's going to be whining for his dinner. I was about to say the same thing about you, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I don't know why we always do them at this time. It's, you know, this is a time when you're meant to be feeding. <laughs> <laughs> ah, cool. What, what, what kind of dog do you have? Let's go, go in a dog chat before we start. <laughs> Standard wire haired dachshund. dachshund. Oh, nice. So he's he's just a very scruffy looking, he's like a medium sized dog with small legs. Aww. So yeah, he's our, our only son. We've got four daughters and <laughs> men, Truman. But don't wait on Mel. He will be back by the time he needs to say something. Is he called Truman? That's a great Truman. name for a dog. Yeah, the kids had watched the show uh, uh, when we got him. I love that. I like, love that. like me, he's from Aberdeenshire. <laughs> I love that. So will we get started with okay, Mel and he'll join us by the yeah, time yeah, me and it. Rachel have waffled through our intro, I think it will be. <laughs> Mel is here. Is that this to the side? This way, this way. Yeah. So, thank you everybody so much for joining us. It is brilliant to see you all again. We were just saying before we went live that these Tuesday afternoons come around pretty quick so it's been two weeks since we've seen most of you on LinkedIn live so we're delighted that you've made the time to join us again 
For those of you who don't know, my name is Rachel and I'm part of the Creative Entrepreneurs Club and I am delighted that my partner in crime, Andrew Dobie, the founder of Made Brave and I, continue to do these sessions every couple of weeks. We are headlined and supported by two slash three now wonderful people, supported by Keenan, who is to my left right there, who's mm -hmm. keeping all the stuff going on in the chat box. So please do send us some messages and keep us going. And we're delighted that Mel and Jolene from a regular sleep pattern have joined us today. And we're going to have loads to talk about because these guys are setting up something new at a time where setting up something new might not be considered something new. So <laughs> delighted to be here. The Creative Entrepreneurs Club is a support network for you guys. We have just over 1,700 members. Please check us out and join us. We kicked off a new model supported with these guys up here at Made Brave at the beginning of March. And we've all been going from strength to strength ever since. We do hope that these sessions give you a bit of inspiration, a bit of enlightenment, something interesting to talk about, and a little more understanding what happens in the world of our creatives. So. The double act we have, I'm going to hand over to Andrew, who's going to give us a bit of context about why we do what we do, and then we're going to get stuck right into a chat with Jolene and Mill. Andrew. Thanks, Rachel, Thanks, Rachel. and hi everyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome if you're Welcome just joining us. Joining us. Uh, I've got yeah, really got a weird echo in my, echo in my ear for some ear reason for now, but I'll just take that off for a second. Um, so yeah, no, if you don't know me, I'm Andrew Dobie. I'm the founder of Made Brave. We're a global strategic brand agency. We're based out of Glasgow. Um, as Rachel mentioned a few months ago at the beginning of COVID, um, we kind of joined forces um, and uh, Rachel kindly with the Creative Entrepreneurs Club and our team at Made Brave kind of been working together to try and kind of do our best to support the creative industries throughout this kind of challenging time. Um, if you jump over to creativeentrepreneursclub.co.uk, which is Rachel's site, maybe Keenan will pop that up on the screen. Um, we've got all sorts of fantastic things to help and support you just now. So um, if you're looking for a job or if you have a job um, to give to someone or you know available within your company there's a job board on there so we'd ask you to go on there and um, share any posts that you have or if you're looking for something see if there's some um, appropriate jobs for you over there and um, you can also though um, we have uh, free one-to-one -one support over there so we've got loads of very kind helpers helpers who have given up um, time during their week I'm on there, Keenan's on there, Rachel is on there, along with a whole host of other friendly um, people. So if you're just kind of trying to figure out what your next move is just now, what to do next, or you just need a little bit of a kind of someone to chat to and try and um, figure things out, there's all sorts of people that can help you on their way. And if we can't do it, we'll try our best to point you in the direction of someone else. Um, and I think, uh, Jolene and Mel, are you guys on there? No, is that? Yeah. Yeah, you've yeah. got they're on there as well. So if you want to pick at their brains, you can oh, do no, that. Also. We used to be advisors, we're not anymore, but we're there. Oh, no, and they're, they're and members hanging yeah. out as members uh, and getting, okay. like, getting involved. Yeah. My mistake, my mistake. So um, but also if you're if you're on LinkedIn, you are on LinkedIn because you're on here and we're on LinkedIn Live. Um, but if you pop <laughs> up into the search tab above me um and you click on creative industry COVID support, uh, we've also got a LinkedIn um group here where there, there's just under four thousand people have now joined and again all signposting each other in the way of grants loans jobs and just a little bit of morale and uh friendship as well so um yeah so you know as rachel mentioned these sessions we've been bringing together we're just trying to kind of bring a little bit of creativity into everyone's lives so we've been joining and doing these every two weeks um you know we say it made brave that creativity is in everyone and we truly believe that and so we're trying to bring on some creative people to inspire a little bit of positivity uh, in, uh, in us all right now including us you know we often find that these sessions come at a good time for myself and Rachel and Keenan, and we come away just as inspired as hopefully you will um, as well. So uh, back to Rach. So I am delighted to introduce you to Mill and Jolene who have created a regular sleep pattern now, guys, I don't want to get into um, a whole area of what your product is. So I'm going to try and tell me if I'm right or if I'm wrong. So this is sleepwear and bedwear. <laughs> that is basically for the 21st century. It's like new stuff. You get it was stuff we've never seen before. Uh, but you guys don't have a background in fashion and product design. Could that uh... be correct? Not we don't have a background in fashion design. I am a product designer, actually. Ah, sorry, so, my mistake. Let's kick off there then. Okay. Um, 
And you've worked in fashion. And I have worked in fashion, <laughs> but, I, but I would not call myself a fashion designer, and I'm happy to talk about that. Um, yeah, so I, I trained as a product designer, having done 10 years in the music business. So I kind of came to it all quite late. Um, and when I was 27, I uh, went to Glasgow School of Art to study product design as a mature student, and then um, did a master's degree at the Royal College of Art, and uh, graduated uh, in 2000, just when um, that kind of uh, first um, sort of big recession hit, uh, just following that kind of the digital bubble, when, when that burst first time around. So it was a, a bad time for me to graduate. So I ended up kind of falling into having my own practice, having to have my own practice by default. And unfortunately, I have managed to sustain a consultancy kind of practice and doing kind of a whole bunch of different things. And I think in terms of um, creativity, I think that my background in product design, I see it as just I, I design stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's quite difficult to find the thread between it all, which is why my, my personal website during his kind of phrase that it's quite millish my name is mill so my, my website is called millish because there's no it's not that i do products or services or experiences i do a little bit of everything and now a little bit of fashion perhaps but really um i think what ties it together is just this kind of creative itch and i think it's just about mm -hmm. uh, i found personally that as i i've got older um you could just sometimes you just need to kind of find different ways to express it and things have a kind of cyclical nature of turning around on themselves so um that's that's been my pathway. So I do have a, a background in design, and I do I'm very interested in kind of brand narrative, and that's something that we could maybe talk about a little bit further. But yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Colleen's background is different. Yeah, but we what we hadn't what we hadn't done is um, what you hadn't done was manage production. So although you had designed for an Italian fashion brand, you were never involved in the actual production. So that's what we've been learning from scratch. And I was a TV producer, and I think. Um, so I was used to working on tight deadlines, tiny budgets, um, having to think on your feet and come up with solutions. So it wasn't as scary for us to try and learn how to do this from scratch because that's kind of how I've how I've always operated. So we we've had a lot to learn, um, but we've also because we we were until recently we were both working full time whilst doing this. So it's taken us three years to get to this point, which has been a bit frustrating in a way, but also now that we're ready to launch it has been great just not rushing taking time learning as we go um yeah so that's where that's where we're at at the moment so, so mel what i took from that is that you're an expert in starting things in recessions <laughs> you, said that when you graduated before right you, you well, said you a, you, 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 landed that team, you, you were starting a business and here we find ourselves in another recession or the start of another recession and you're starting a business yeah. Right. Talk but us when, through that. <laughs> we knew that we were going to be starting around about now, but that's we, we knew that about a year ago. We didn't know that COVID was going to happen. Yeah. Um, but actually, it hasn't really um, it hasn't impacted that that badly on our business because we're very you know we're small and we're starting things very small because we can't you know we don't have backers. It's just us. Mm -hmm. um, so and we want to grow that our, our brand very organically and just re really so the first launch is really just kind of testing the market you know we're not investing in, in a huge amount um mm -hmm. of stock so just just taking it small steps and that seems kind of sensible and, and manageable for us and it's the way that we want to grow the brand and uh it's it's there haven't really been any kind of big impacts apart from the fact that i've never been to meet the people who are actually making the stuff which i don't like at all because that's one of the things that i like as a as a creative person i always get quite inspired yeah. and i'm sure you're the same going to print works or actually seeing how typesetters do their thing all that kind of stuff. you know just <laughs> seeing the process quite often you can find li limitations in, in a factory and say oh, well we can't do it that way but that can spark off something quite good mm -hmm. and that, that's that's how we've come up with the design for our bedding the construction of the bedding which is quite a, a good thing that we've come up with which was uh, because we, could, we couldn't do what we thought we would be able to do. So mm -hmm. I, I like those kind of parameters. And, and they they happen very often by actually going and meeting people and being in the factory and talking to folk and ch challenging their preconceptions and then challenging what you do. And you kind of find a good way to work together. And that's the thing which we haven't managed to do, which is disappointing. But mm -hmm. we will do, of course. So that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the slightly weird thing about launching mm -hmm. for us in, at this time is that we're having stuff made in Portugal and it's now been shipped here. And I've never met. I haven't been to the factory, I haven't met them, and it's just everything's been done this way. Yeah. So um, there's a big element of, of trust. But at the same time, I think it's quite sensible. And one of the, my issues with working in fashion before, I used to work for 
um, a fashion designer, as Jolly mentioned, in, based in Italy. And myself and my business partner, um, Bob McCaffrey, we used to design shoes and eyewear for a fashion designer called Dirt Vic and Boats. And we were working in, in the factory in Italy and we would spend two weeks every month out there. And just all traveling after a while, after doing it for two years, I just thought, this is actually madness. Mm -hmm. you know, I just felt it, it sat very poorly with me and there was no reason for it really. And even the thrill of being able to eat fantastic food, you know, you put on a lot of weight and <laughs> Italian got a little bit better, but I just thought I, I can't live with myself any longer. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm pleased if, if everyone can start to be a little bit more kind of uh, conscious of their movements. Totally. Mm -hmm. Totally. So tell Sorry. us about the regular sleep pattern then. Give us, give us the brand. What, what are you guys all about? Well, the name was really key. Um, we knew that we wanted to do bedding, bedding and sleepwear, because when we moved into our, um, our home together, we've got, um, we've got quite a large family. We've got uh, four girls um, and we, mo we moved into a house about four or five years ago. And we couldn't, um, we could, just couldn't find bedding and stuff that we liked. And we quite like. Um, well, we like you know, having fun with clothes and color. Our whole house is filled with color. And we just saw a gap in the market. But we kind of joked at that point and said, shall we start a business? But then, you know, we, we, we didn't. And then a couple of years later, I was turning 40 and Mill was turning 50. And that seemed like quite a good like now or never thing. And then we said, right, look, will we actually try and do this? I wanted a change of career. And so before we even started, because Mill um, teaches design thinking at Glasgow School of Art, as well as having his own practice, we really interrogated our brand values. We felt we had a hunch there was a gap in the market, but we spent a lot of time working on our brand story before we did anything else. So then by the time we we launched, we had a really clear idea of what we were doing. So you, you were saying earlier, Mill, it's like it's about what we make, but it's also about it's about, about the way that we do, we do the way it. We do so it. we had a very clear idea right in the outset. Before I, had, before I had designed anything at all, I knew exactly what the brand would be and what it would stand for and the name and everything. And, I, and I, it was really clear in my mind, like what we're doing right now is exactly what was in my mind, but I hadn't actually designed it. And I think that's, that. I know that they were jumping right ahead, but if there's advice that I could give to, to anyone, it's really focus on the brand story like how will people talk about it why why will they give a damn you know what's going to make it different what would make it stand out and that, that was very clear for us and actually it helped helped us a lot just in initial uh, discussions with other people who might be interested and actually we got a small um, development grant from scottish enterprise mm -hmm. which was really useful at a key stage but i know that it really helped them to have confidence in us because i could articulate very clearly what the brand was about and, and people got it very quickly and so we haven't said so we say that it's be it's bedding and sleepwear for sartorial extroverts, which is kind of a mouthful, but we don't mind that because- I had to look that word up, sartorial, <laughs> on Google. I had to Google that to- <laughs> I don't believe you. But even the fact that the brand is difficult to say, I mean, I, I mean I'm sure that, you know, if it was a, a handbook on, you know, how to, how to design a good brand name, I, I can bet you that irregular sleep pattern would fail in many counts. But m the people who I think will like the brand get it and find it funny. And those who kind of say, that's a shit name, it's probably not for you. And that's yeah, absolutely we, fine. We know that we're going to have a niche but loyal uh, audience. You know, we're not trying to be mainstream or be in John Lewis. We we know, we kind of know, and from our Instagram, it's, it's you know, it's artists and designers and musicians and people who have found mm -hmm. us. So it is niche, but, um, you know, it's the kind of, we, we love the idea of creating this kind of happy gang of irregular sleepers. Um, because what, we, what do you mean by that term, a regular sleeper? Can you kind of explain that just for, for anyone oh, listening? Yeah. Uh, that, that just means that that's our jargon. It's like our fan club, if you know what I mean. Like, so, okay, so okay, okay. You see people where if, if, that's your tribe, that's your name for your tribe. Yeah, you're kind of, yeah. Yeah. We're not promising that you'll sleep better in the pajamas, just to make it clear. <laughs> yeah. you might. <laughs> We're promising that you'll feel joy. You can't wear these prints without feeling without feeling joy. So, I mean, so as well as the the look and the kind of cuts of the garments, which Mill can talk more about, we were really keen to have an ethical business. You know, so organic fabric and ethical business. You know, we're we're we campaign. You know, we we've been on all the Extinction Rebellion marches. You know, um, we really care about our own carbon footprint, and we did not want to be launching. A fashion business um that's going to just you know do do more harm than good so also the construction we're you know it's twin needle construction so we hope it's going to have a long life so it was important that we feel good about what we're doing and that the people who buy our stuff feel good about wearing it um and that that all has presented challenges um yeah 
Yeah, but that's what that's what builds your brand, right? That's the, yeah. the, 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 the pajamas are just part of it. They're the product. They're the but you know, you're you're trying to do something bigger, you know. So can you maybe tell us a little bit more about that, that kind of purpose and you know what the driving force behind it is? Because, you know, yeah. as you as you say, the pajamas are just one small part of a brand. And I think that's good for people that are listening when they you know, when you when you build a brand, it's not it's, you know, the identity is just a facade. You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the front face of something, but there's there's much more to building a brand, building a business, and, and building an audience as well, isn't there? Yeah, I think so. I th and I think it's about the way the way that you interact with your with your audience as well, even before you've got the product. I mean, I think that we're we're tr trying to establish those kind of build that kind of trust right from the beginning by acting in the way which is, feels right to us. And, mm -hmm. and I think if you do that, I think if a, any brand does that. With conviction and they stick to it then i think those are the brands that people uh, stay loyal to and love and, and and hopefully can can sustain themselves rather than just kind of trying to cash in on something so you know as jolene said we're not trying to it's not that we want to be a massive you know brand i mean it, it would be nice um <laughs> but you know you know i i'm still working you know i've, I've got a full-time job as well so this is you know in, in a way um something which we're hoping is going to grow but we're taking it very slowly but i think the, the point about trying to do things the right way. I and mean, for instance, something which we had to jettison really early on, which was very sad, was that we really wanted to be able to make in Britain if it was at all possible. And we tried, we tried very hard to explore Made in Scotland because we're based in Glasgow. But it just, it was, we couldn't find anyone at all well, to do it in a way that it was a, affordable, affordable yeah. but also even the, the samples that we did have made didn't have quite have the, the right kind of build quality. And it's, that's, a, a worry for me well it, i don't know it, i just it's a disappointment I, i'd hope that there would be because we really well we really love patrick grant you were wanting to speak about patrick grant and he's reinvigorating made in britain yeah i don't, uh, I don't know if, if if the um listeners um, know about um patrick grant who's maybe known best as a, a sort of a handsome face of the sewing, sewing, sewing bee. bee british sewing bee <laughs> Um, but he also has a, he's got a Savile Row tailoring company, but also set up, because he likes Made in Britain, he set up this kind of network of factories who, who supply him, you know, they make stuff in, in England. And he found out that a lot of them are really just kind of absolutely kind of just holding on their fingernails to, st to stay in business. So he developed a new brand, a clothing line called Community Clothing. And uh, the idea is that he just found out who can make what within our network of suppliers and he found out the things that they could all make in common. He said, okay, so you guys have all got pants for everything. Whenever anyone's got some downtime, let us know and we'll put some product your way, which is a lovely idea. So he's kind of keeping everything and actually the garments are good. I'm happy to plug them. <laughs> and, uh, so he's, he's and, and they're quite not possible. expensive and made ethically. And like, there's a really nice kind of, you know, human story about connecting people and trying very much mm -hmm. to try and you know, sustain that kind of livelihood and great British craftsmanship. Um, I'm sounding jingoistic. I don't mean it that way at all. I just think, you know, why, you know, if we could make it affordably and also sort of, you know, sustain economy, that would be great. So it's something that we would like to have done, and I suppose we still do we like the do idea of that in the future. But yeah, yeah, we just couldn't afford to do it at the moment. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry, Andrew, I've gone off topic. No, no, it's all right. This is always the weird bit where it's like, I, I think Rachel's going to ask a question. She <laughs> thinks I'm going to ask a question, and then we look awkwardly at each other, and and then someone. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it that's exactly it i do have a question have you got a question though i do you jump in because this is all good stuff yeah well i suppose um you know um I, i'm interested um you know I, I suppose if anyone's listening and they're thinking right okay um you know i'm thinking of doing something different just now and you know i've always wanted to have a clothing brand or you know like where do you start with the, you know um i i've probably got a good idea in my head but i'm just interested from your perspective you've just gone through it so what would advice would you give to someone who was about to create you know clothing brand i mean for some people it's quite daunting to understand well how do i reach out and find a you know factory in portugal where does that journey start begin and you know and it yeah i think there are t there are two ways that, that people seem to go about this um i, I, I think as entrepreneurs people or people have got an idea to do a startup you've probably got um I, I like sewing and I really want to make stuff and I made something for my kids and they really like it. So I'm sure the rest of the world would like that, but that's maybe more born, born of, I, I, just, I want to make things. Mm -hmm. And then the other way of looking at it is thinking, you know, is there a gap in the market? Is, you know, it, where, is, where is there an opportunity? And I think in terms of attracting um, sort of energy around your new idea, I would mm -hmm. recommend that you certainly don't dismiss the second part because i think this idea of like recognizing you know is there actually an audience for what i want to do and how can i can i articulate that in some way is there what even if there was just one garment that you could put in front of someone and say 
would you know does any is anyone interested in this is it does it have a point of difference and i think that's the key thing so for us um we, we managed to get as i mentioned earlier this kind of very first investment when we knew nothing we had, didn't have any products nothing you know like i can't sell anything really um <laughs> you can you know, you're a knitter but you know yeah. we weren't going to sell knitted pajamas but <laughs> you're, you're selling pajamas right now <laughs> yeah, yeah. You do realize by coming on an interview and talking about pajamas, you're going to sell pajamas. We're wearing, we should say yeah, yeah. that we're wearing our pajamas. <laughs> but yeah, the, but the, diff the really difficult thing was finding a factory. And um, what we did at the start was we just asked everyone we knew, you know, do you know any, do you know any factories? Can you recommend anything? So mm. we, we sampled with a really great factory in London. They were brilliant, but we, we, it wasn't sustainable to keep using them. Then through like friends of friends of friends, we find the factory that we're now working with in Portugal. And then we got put in touch with Katie from Fashion Foundry in Glasgow. And that has been, um, transformative for us because she is like a guardian angel that just came into our life exactly when we needed her and mm -hmm. um because actually the the clothing industry it's it's really quite um it's old-fashioned you can't just google and find something online you know and we don't know anything like the terminology that you're meant to use or you know it's like learning a whole new language so mm -hmm. we'd kind of managed to get so far but we definitely needed help to get to the next stage so I think for any young people it is just um you know plug into as many networks as as you can and ask as ask everyone you know for their advice yeah but actually there's something which happened much much earlier which i think is good advice too <laughs> which is uh, prototype your idea very quickly mm -hmm. and and ask for feedback mm -hmm. honestly not just from your pals but you know get get whatever and this i think goes for any kind of new product development don't fall in love with it so much that you're nervous to get feedback. You know, it's much, much better if you can test your idea with real people and get the painful, hard news early mm -hmm. and then modify it or ditch it because then you haven't spent uh, three years and thousands of pounds investing in something which no one wants. That, I mean, that would be exactly, yeah. tragic. So I think the best advice is mm -hmm. to get close enough, you know, and just do lots of iterations of your idea. So if it's in the fashion thing, you know, just finding someone who, who was a pattern cutter was brilliant for us and working with him and just saying, yeah, listen, that's not quite right. Can we try it again? And just going through a process of not being too precious about it and then giving it to lots of people who did it really early on and say, could you just try it on? Tell us honestly, what do you think? And that's that's the way to kind of build it because we were challenging ourselves. So that, I think that's probably quite good advice for everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so in, I'm interested in the, the journey that you've had in the last um, year, because you said you, you'd always planned last year that you were going to kick something off this year, but then COVID did happen. And you're saying that's not really impacted you on that much. Is that because you had a, a really focused plan and you were able to work through it? Or is it because you're just like, you know what, we just have to, we're going to hit the pause button in a different way. What has really been the impact? Well, I got COVID, so that was a huge impact. Oh my gosh. I was in bed for weeks and weeks and weeks. So originally we were going to launch in around May because we're actually launching with a Kickstarter and we're working with another brilliant uh, Scottish company called Paved with Gold. Um, and the reason we decided to launch with Kickstarter is it allows us to test our products, to use it as yep. a kind of testing platform, but also um, Paved with Gold and K, they, they, they've given us a kind of roadmap to launching. And we really need. We felt like we really needed our hands held for for that launch. So, um, yeah. So we 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 knew that we were getting closer and closer. You know, we'd had the samples from the Portuguese factory quite early in the year, and we'd pulled to scrabbled our finances together to be able to afford three hundred pairs of pajamas, which isn't cheap. And uh, and so we were kind of ready to go. And then I got ill and. Um, so we had to wait till I got a bit better and then, you know, so that that's that's the kind of key thing that changed the timeline, isn't it? But because we'd taken so long in the lead up, we, we knew that we were going to be ready to launch this year. And then we we didn't know if it was a good idea to launch, you know, at, at, you know, at this time because of COVID and lots of the kind of people that we think will be our customers have had their income completely, you know, it, it's completely gone so then we kind of feel a bit guilty <laughs> about that as well um but we, we've just decided just to go for it and see what see what happens um you've also got to remember that loads of people are in their pajamas all the time yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but I mean, these, you're lucky to see yeah. Rachel in her clothes today. She's usually in her pajamas when she's on a call with me. Just yeah, but the other oh. brilliant we, we call these pajamas, we call them a pajama suit. Um yeah. because they look you know, I have worn them out uh to 50th birthday parties. You know, you can tuck in the top and it looks like a jumpsuit. Um we've both worn them, you know, to our work like with trousers on underneath. So it's not just pajamas either. So we kind of feel that, yeah, you can lounge about in them and feel great when, you know, you answer the door to the postman in your pajamas. No shame. No shame, yeah. And were you, and were you kind of jumping, you know, over the last few years, we've seen loads of mattress brands appear. You know, mattresses used to be things we didn't even think of as fashion items, but they're almost <laughs> like fashion items now in terms of people pick these brands like Simba and... Um, I can't remember the name. There's, uh, there's 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 tons of them that have appeared, and once you've once you've looked at one or viewed Simba, you're suddenly being, you know, marketed by them all. Um, and I'm just wondering if it was that, that that sparked, you know, this where we saw this, um, I suppose, interest or gap in the market. I mean, that some of the patterns remind me actually of the Simba brand in terms of just that kind of boldness and, um, you know sort of large pattern um, oh, um no not not really we we just couldn't find what we wanted we ended up ordering a duvet cover from a, an australian brand and that just seemed absolutely crazy so and then once we looked into it and i started doing research for our business plan we then saw that the bedding and sleepwear market had boomed by 300 percent in the last couple of years so you know it was actually kind of a lucky coincidence that it is a market that's booming it was completely led by us just thinking Oh, we can't find this, and we want it, and sh and then surely there's other people in the same position. So it was much more of a kind of yeah, it was a coincidence. I mean, I yeah, personally, if I had known there was going to be a, a kind of boom in that, I would have run away from it. <laughs> so you know, re really, because I think that's not a good time to jump on something if everyone else is doing it. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, yeah, so but no one, it wasn't to do. Yeah, I, I wasn't kind no. of thinking about oh, well, we, we'll just ride this wave and then we'll move yeah, on to the next. So thing. we're not entrepreneurs in that way that entrepreneurs um, can spot a kind of trend and then go and then go with it. Um, it's been much more organic than that, and 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 we still feel that no no one else is doing what we're doing, and we're we're you know we've worked really hard to keep our price point as as fair as possible because we also like mill is allergic to the word luxury and um you know and we just didn't want to be in that market so whilst they're more expensive than pajamas that you would get in john lewis they're they're similar to other leading independent brands that are doing quite well um because we want it to be accessible you know it's, it'll be still a treat to buy but um you know that's really important to us Mm -hmm. yeah. So tell us about, about that. I'm intrigued by that because the way that you design and the way that you've created your product, whether the price point is luxurious or not, the look of it is still luxurious. Yeah, yeah so, I don't know. I, th I think if you, if you see them, I think it's good, good, good build quality. I mean, I, I, we're we're kind of fans of workwear, and we like that kind of aesthetic. Okay. Um, and I know that that's also quite fashionable, but we're kind of I suppose we're kind of blending to. Kind of worlds together but I, I i we would like the products to have that kind of feeling that if you can pick them up and this is one of the challenges of doing everything online because i i quite like um bricks and mortar shopping mm. in fact I, I quite like shopping which is perhaps makes me unusual um for a man yeah but anyway i like kind of feeling stuff you know and like having it in my hands and and, and getting the kind of uh you know feeling that you know i can kind of get a sense of the product just from having it in my hands and I think that uh, our our products are built in a in a good way. Yeah, but it's difficult perhaps to com communicate that with people or not because we're going to be doing it online because we want to keep the price point down. So yeah. the, so world, the plan is that the full thing will be e-commerce and yeah, you know. yeah, because we, we we don't we're it, we'd have to be we'd have to double the price if we were going to sell it through um you know like Liberty or something. That was our original kind of aim was to be in kind of select places like that but it just it's crazy you know in terms yeah. of pricing I, mean, I, I hope that the world is starting to wake up to fast fashion uh, um and the the danger you know that we're in if, if we just kind of keep on consuming in that way so uh, i hope that people will kind of i'm, I'm all, i put because we're interested in it we're aware of many more brands who are doing kind of apparel and all kinds yeah of well you've got you've got fantastic brands like patagonia you know we're big yeah, fans yeah. of patagonia keenan here myself and you know yeah. they've got a real great ethos that they you know they, they try and repair um yeah. you know if, if you have 
products that go wrong they'll try and repair them they'll they'll build them to last forever that's kind of what yeah. they say they do that you only need to buy one of those jackets and is, mm -hmm. is that so is that the same sort of ethos that you're trying to build in that yeah they're I mean, maybe that, more expensive that, but really well built point. yeah i mean I, I i don't think we can get a lifetime guarantee on this kind of stuff but, but uh yeah i think that th those guys are certainly kind of like worthy of you know great respect because they kind of stuck to it and i think it's yeah it, it's a great brand but there, there are a lot there are other companies who are trying to do things just in a kind of a more modest way where you can kind of sense yeah it's a little bit more expensive than buying from you know a high street store but i think you understand that and this has been a, a kind of trend which has been uh, you know around for a while and i just I, I hope that people don't confuse that with luxury because i think the luxury market is such a different kind of thing really mm -hmm. in the fashion world and, and we are we are certainly a million miles away from that yeah i think you one of the interesting things i really love about you guys is that you are also on an education piece around this. So it's not just about saying, this is what we want to do, this is our brand, this is who we are. There's actually a whole piece around the education of manufacturer, engagement, customer, mm -hmm. product. Yeah. And even the fact that, you know, the opening line is, well, we, we don't consider ourselves as fashion designers. We're not in that space. We're, but I, I have been designing for a fashion brand and I am creating a fashion brand and so for the, when, when somebody who's not in that space sitting listening to that you're thinking I don't I don't know if I understand this but you guys I think one of the things that's really impressive you guys have got a full package around your story and we talked about it quite a lot so can we see some stuff can we throw up the Instagram page and have a look and let Maybe everybody um, yeah. around us see what's going on. Because I'd like you to talk to us about, because you've got cool names for things, right? And you've got a way of us identifying what's going on. Um, we're going to do it. Because your Instagram page is really beautiful. And I'm, I'm definitely, I think we said before the call, I'm ready to purchase. I am. Okay, thank you. In that space. Yeah, so it's launching on the 15th of September. Um, okay. Uh, and our website is, the, our Instagram is probably the best place to go. But there is, you can sign up to the mailing list on our website as well. But what we've been trying to do is just, I suppose, get people to feel like they know us a little bit. So we've been, you know, we're our office is in our is in our house. It used to be the kids' playroom, but now the kids are all teenagers, and so we've basically taken what would be their party room and made it into our irregular sleep pa pattern studio. Um, there are no more parties in the house. No. So <laughs> you can see no, us no on more. the screen just now of the six of us in our pajamas. That's that's us with our girls. Um, and that's the six launch prints. You can see that Mila is wearing them tucked in like a jumpsuit. Um, in, well, I should, can I just explain that? Yeah. It's it's one product, basically. Well, two. We're doing a duvet cover with matching pillowcases and one pyjama suit. The pyjama suit is gender neutral. So we can, it's got a kind of slightly tailored fit, which we hope is good on all kinds of bodies. Well, we know it is because we've tested it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um so it's it you know it's a really simple proposition from our from our end but i think it's you know i think i think it's not that easy to do something simple well and, and it's been a process of quite a few kind of you know iterations and, and uh, runs at it so it's just a, a good well-fitting garment that is designed to be look good on all yeah, all genders on everyone. Yeah. Okay. so so we've got paradox what have we got paradox for sabi yeah, yeah these, so that we're just launching it in three prints originally. And although, again, I like, and I'm keen to say that I'm not um, a textile designer, and I'm also not a graphic designer, but I have uh, designed the graphics and textiles for these things. <laughs> because well, when are you when are you eventually going to be these things, Mel? <laughs> that, that, that you do every day. I don't know, but someone had to do it anyway. Someday, someday, someday. With other well, with other folks. So we're, we're launching with three patterns, and the three patterns were all to do with print. So yeah. one of to do with sorry, sleep. all to do with sleep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so one has got Zs on it, obviously, massive Zs, um, and and one is has the bed bugs. Bed you can bugs, see on which, the DVD which cover Jolene's there. wearing, and you can see on that. Oh, and yeah, okay. And these were just the bed bugs were painted by our friend, who, the artist Annabelle Wright, um, who's based yeah. in Glasgow. Uh, so that's our first artist collaboration. So um, she. And so we just thought it'd be funny to put massive bed bugs on on bedding. There's, there's no reason. And by making them so massive, we thought they were perhaps less scary or more scary. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just so, conscious of time. We've got five minutes left. Yeah, I'm sorry, so we've, we've got a couple of questions coming in. Um, Keenan, I don't know if you want to select some. And if yeah, anyone else has any questions for the guys, 
feel free yeah. to pop them up. We'll highlight them and try and get best to get through them. Can I just can I just say a special hello though to Graham who just stumbled across what was going on here while posting nonsense on LinkedIn and he stayed. So he stumbled across us at ten past five and he's still with us. So hi Graham, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Hi Graham. <laughs> So Katie, are we doing this one first? Yeah, so so Katie's saying, um, you know, you mentioned prototyping your product and testing it. How did you go about that process and how did you find customers to test the product on? Well, what, what we should say is the customers that we tested on were our friends. We had a pajama party um, and we got our friends around. And then also our models are also our friends, our models on our website and in our Instagram. But prototyping but the we, product But we now, did ask our friends to be brutally honest. So I, th I think my point about trying to get, get people to try it on is don't just say, do you love it? But say, <laughs> you know, how could it be better? What's wrong? Where is it uncomfortable? Um, and, and we did get useful feedback from that. And, and those things have all gone into kind of slightly refining the product. Um, so we didn't at that stage, for instance, have Instagram to test things on but as Jolene was saying um, Katie that in a way the Kickstarter campaign is a further iteration of this kind of process so we're selling them slightly cheaper than the movie and we, we're going to say it quite explicitly we want to have your feedback mm -hmm. are there any changes how, how, how does it make you feel how do you like them but and then just quickly so prototyping we first of all we find a mill drew the drew a kind of rough sketch of a pattern we then work with a pattern cutter in Glasgow um, to make the original pattern. Then we got a, a, an innovation grant from Scottish Enterprise and we used that money to then get that pattern made into a kind of actual gradable pattern. Um, and we got several pairs in each size made and that was in a, in a place in London. And I, we're happy to share our factory contacts with anyone. So find us on um, on our website or Instagram, send a message, Katie, and I'll, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll share our contacts with you. And also fi finding printers as well, like textile printers, we, we used a bit of, a, a bit, a bit of that um, money to just try try things out. So I think it's really important to just, to, just do whatever you can to do it in the quickest way possible. Mm. That's cool. So on the 15th of September, is it the crowdfund that's been launched? Yeah, but it's not just... Yeah, it's Kickstarter, but we're not using it to raise the money. We've already got the products here. So normally with Kickstarter, you you know, you raise the money and then you make the products. We're we're just using it as a platform to launch the brand and and then get feedback on the product. So it goes live at nine o'clock on the morning on the 15th of September. Um there's going to be 180 pajama suits across the across two sizes. Um, uh, well, this is something we've yet to do is to become a size inclusive brand. We could only afford to make in small, medium, large, but as soon as we can, we're going to be sizing up. Um, and then we'll have 50 duvet sets, all at reduced price. But I would recommend setting an alarm for that 15th of September because we can tell from Instagram that there's going to be a bit of a scrabble because it's not that many suits available. 180 is not, not very much. Okay, uh, and then, I'll, uh, I'll do that. I'm, I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to set my alarm. We're going to go <laughs> off and get that. Does anyone else have a question, or are we done? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we did have one more, uh, just from John, and John wants to know how Instagram's working for you. Looks like you guys have 1,500 followers already. Uh, so really good. Yeah, Jolene's been the queen of that. Yeah, I mean, I think Instagram. I, I had help from um, from an amazing friend on how to do an Instagram strategy. So I really plan it out. So I plan it out month by month and, um, you know, figure out how I'm going to tell the story and also um, and and keep keep the contact, keep the content in kind of small chunks. Um, I, I'm still learning from it. I think the thing that got us the most followers was Lauren Laverne read, read it out on her um, Thursday independent business shout out. That was kind of transformative. On BBC Six. On Six, Six Music. Yeah. Um, so hashtags and things don't seem to be working for me, but every day three or four people are coming to join us and we're not really fixated on numbers. We'd rather have kind of quality of we can see the people coming or people that are really liking it and that's that's fine but i think it would be really hard to do a business without instagram now um yeah and we, we've yet to do our press drive as well we're about to do that in the next couple of weeks so that should make a bit of a difference but mm -hmm. i think instagram the lovely thing is we feel like we're creating a community and you have lots of nice conversations with people and yeah. so i you know i i really love that 
Um, but I am disciplined about about how how I go about it. I don't just you know shove something up each day. I think that's the key thing. And posting every day, even though Mill worries that's too much, but I think that's just what you've what you've got to do. Uh, one post a day, and then some personal stuff on stories. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, guys, thank you so much for sharing your story today with us. It's been uh, great to hear and I'm sure inspirational um, for everyone who's thinking about starting something right now. Uh, you're proving that you can go and do it and uh, we wish you all the best as thank the you. business launches on the 15th of September. If everyone didn't hear that, um, they're launching on a Kickstarter, <laughs> so look out for that. Um, and thanks to everyone for coming on, joining in. Um, we'll be back in two weeks' time again. We're always at five o'clock on LinkedIn here. So if you want to join again, make sure you follow Made Brave and Creative Entrepreneurs Club and turn on all notifications. Um, thanks again, and we'll see you see you next time. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks, guys. That was awesome. Thank you.